the arts especially address the idea of aesthetic experience. An aesthetic experience is one in which your senses are operating at their peak. When you're present in the current moment, when you're resonating with the excitement of this thing that you're experiencing, when you are fully alive. Ken Robinson's explanation of an aesthetic experience acted as the cornerstone definition of what I wanted my students to achieve and understand when searching for their own aesthetic connection. I created a student-led sensory-based project which inspired learners to make an aesthetic connection to something their peers created. The project required seven groups of three students to transform the theatre into a functioning aesthetic laboratory. The groups chose a theme that would inspire an aesthetic connection from their peers. Topics that were familiar to the students, like the Japanese occupation of Korea, the Loose Han earthquake in China, World War II, greed and corruption, the sinking of the Titanic, and the fall of the Berlin Wall. As well, feelings like love or family were used to tap into the emotional component of the aesthetic. It was made clear to the learners that groups were to select a theme that the whole class would have a solid grasp of, and that is of an interest to them. The reasoning for this is explained in Chapter 13 of the OECD's publication of The Nature of Learning. We know that a fundamental characteristic of human thinking is that people try to make sense of new information by linking it to what they already know and can do. This 70 minute experience consisted of four parts. The first was for groups to generate their theme. Next they researched, planned, yeah, so I just want to um, lead different groups and experience their it. Created so. stations yeah, so we'll be guys in the theater fun. for participants to move through and experience. The stations included sensory activities applying taste, smell, touch, sight, sound, and even meditation and imagination. After participants of the experience move through all the aesthetic stations, they are to come together and engage in the final word speaking strategy so that everyone may share their ideas and feelings experienced during the process. The use of the final word strategy was implemented because my learners were familiar with the workings of the activity as they have actively used this strategy in other applications throughout the year. This logic is reinforced in the text The Nature of Learning. Students are more motivated when they feel competent to do what is expected of them. Hence, expectations do not widely exceed perceptions of capability and that students with well-calibrated judgments in line with actual performance are much more effective at regulating their learning.
After groups have shared their ideas and thoughts, they are then to take those ideas and shape them into a collage drama piece that they will present for their peers. Collage drama involves many different forms of drama that come together artistically to tell a story or deliver a message. Theater forms like tableau, forum theater, physical theater, and visual theater, just to name a few. After the students presented their collage drama pieces, there was a final reflection on the total aesthetic experience. Everyone had a chance to share what was revealed. Um, we need to go to the next question, sorry. So my question is, I'm pretty sure that you felt the love of your mother when your childhood and then and also right now you you actually feeling your love for mother what do you think the difference between your childhood love and nowadays love from your mother Later on, when you look at it you can go back to your own memory and you can feel how you used to feel although you can never be that child anymore our project and i hope you guys enjoy them I chose my year 11 drama class as the test subject for this project for a few specific reasons. Number one, all 21 students make up the same ethnic background. They are all Korean nationals. Number two, I have known, taught, and worked with most of this group of students for the past five years continuously, giving me a very familiar connection with them. Evidence for these important two points is expanded in Chapter 13 of The Nature of Learning. Understanding the different backgrounds and starting points that young people bring with them to the learning environment is an integral element of understanding the strengths and limitations of the individual groups of learners, as well as the motivations and aspirations that shape the learning process.